Welcome everyone. Today I'm going to be discussing an excerpt from Aristotle's metaphysics book 7 on the nature of the substrate. And I've already said too much. I've used too many metaphysically charged words or concepts already, nature and substrate, but we need to introduce it somehow. And I want to read only from a very short passage, and I won't go into some of the other passages which may be, well, which could all too easily be used to refute what I'm trying to say, but I, so I won't go over them in detail, I will mention one of them in a second. So if you'd like to read along, this is Metaphysics, Book Eta, Book 7, according to the uh, Loeb Classical uh, Library, I'm at <clears throat> chapter 3 in book 7, this is 1028b, line, is it 33 here. And what I'm going to try and say is a retranslation of Aristotle's notion of tohypokemenon in such a way that we can rescue this from the reification of the representation. Now, why this matters is because there is a long-standing debate whether there is something like prime matter in Aristotle when it comes to the elements and whether there is something that's always underlying any, kind, any sort of counter-moving change, oppositional change, metabolane, transformation, or so there's just always something underlying. Here in Metaphysics Book 7, the um, <clears throat> I'm going to read from the tra very traditional classical translation here first. I'm going to refer to the Greek as well, and we are going to go over some of the possibilities that are also lurking there and unearth them in the Greek language, which are completely covered over by the standard translation, which we find here in the Loeb Classics edition. But I'm going to read now first from the official translation. The term substance is used, if not in more, at least in four principal cases. For both the essence and the universal and the genus are held to be the substance of the particular and fourthly, the substrate. The substrate is that of which the rest are predicated, while it is not itself predicated of anything else. Hence, we must first determine its nature, for the primary substrate is considered to be, in the truest sense, substance. Now, to anyone who is familiar with Aquinian <coughs> scholastic metaphysics or with Aristotelianism, well, to, you know, this will sound to your ear, will ring very familiar. But let me just say what the Greek says. The first sentence is not that the term substance is used. No. Legetai de heusia. Legetai. It says itself, usia. Legetai de heusia. Or, of course, we could say of usia. It is spoken, it is said. But. What should stop us from thinking of this as saying itself? Uzia says itself. Uzia, substance. Uzia can mean presence. It means homestead. Heidegger was the one who reminded us of this. So maybe we should stay with the notion of presence before we leap to the ordinary translation as substance, which is what? which is what representational thinking requires to hold on to something immediately. So substance is made up of, but no, no, usia legitai. Presence gathers itself in such a way, in four ways to be precise, and he says, if not even more, different ways. So again, it's not exhausted by what he's saying. It's very important that it's not exhausted by it, what Aristotle is saying. And now here, I won't go into the <clears throat> translation of Catholo as universal and on the question of Genus. 
I will here focus very briefly for now, and I will have to make at some point a lecture on, I have to record a lecture on, on, on the question of essence as well. But let me just point you to this. There is no word for essence in Aristotle. Sometimes when it says tutti en enai, it's translated as essence, and sometimes they translate it as formal cause. That seems very different. The Greek says to ti en enai, which we translate as that which was to be, or that which has been being. So there is a temporal dimension, the simple past form, the aorist form more precisely, which lingers on in being. Being is the old, it is that which was. So presence says itself, concentrates itself, gathers itself when? When there is that which was, which lingers on in being. So you see, I am trying to opening up this text to thinking, instead of going over in the representational mode of the already known imagination about what is supposed to be substance, etc. Compare this to this. The term substance is used, if not in more, at least in four principal cases, for both the essence and the universal, etc., etc. This is the official translation. Again, Uzia, that which is present, says itself, gathers itself unto itself, for, in four ways or more, for it is that, or Kai, Kai, Kai is mentioned, so and, 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 or we could say, uh, um, we could say uh, for or because when that which was is coming towards that presence as well. So in that presence, what is gathered is that which was. And now we're already lost because we can't represent anything. But it should also alert us to perhaps the fact that we weren't able to represent anything with the term substance itself either. It's just an abstraction. What is essence? It's an empty word, ultimately. We are nearing here the question of opening something up simply by reading again in such a way that even this text can speak to us in an original manner. So I'll say it again. The presence gathers itself, says itself, articulates itself, unfolds when that which was to be being is also present, which is sometimes here translated as essence. But again, toti ene nai is that which was to be. But now what do we make of the substrate? <clears throat> what I wanted to get to in the beginning. The to hypo came in on. The substrate is mentioned as the fourth way in which Uzia, presence, shines forth, articulates itself, finds itself, gathers itself, is spoken of, can be spoken of. Tolpo came in on, again, is usually translated as substrate. I'll read again the official translation. The substrate is that of which the rest are predicated, while it is not itself predicated of anything else. The Greek says, Tolpo hypo came in on, esti kathu ta ala legetai, ekeno te autu meketi kath alu. So, of the Tolpo hypo came in on, it is according to it, that all other ta'ala, everything else, is being said, is being spoken, is, get, is gets articulated, legitai, gets gathered. 
It doesn't say predication. And, however, itself, of itself, nothing other can be said. So what is this supposed to be? And in what sense, if we follow here on what he says, is Uzia seeming, hmm, the most seeming to be, he says, malesta kardoke enai, Uzia tohupo kemenon proton. So it seems to be, or Uzia presence seems to be in the most way, in tohupo kemenon proton, in that which underlies first. Now, we could again represent a stable, underlying ground. To hypokemenon can be translated in this manner. Kemai means to, to lie idly, to rest, to lie underneath hypokemai. That's a perfectly fine translation, yes. But the to hypokemenon is found in this asking after presence itself coming to be present. Tuhupo Kemenon is not already, always already underlying, as it were, but coming to be from out of that which was being. It is the thinking being, the soon logonechon, the human being, which finds a stance and something to hold on to in logos, in that which gathers and articulates and let's say and let's see that we can find the tohupo kemenon, which is not always already simply a priori underlying underneath, simply waiting to be discovered as something that's simply present at hand and given, as the sciences today assume. No, it is found through an investigation of letting presence be and come to be, and also of that which was to be being. And of course, we have to be careful, because Aristotle himself in this book says that instead of asking for being directly, goes through Uzia, presence, or which what the, trans, what the tradition has turned into substance. But I try to be very precise, as precise as I can, in such a spontaneous video without any notes, by the way. So let me try and say this. When we read this, we have to attempt to open up from the Greek text in translation. We have to try and open this text in such a way that we ward off the representation, which already wants to hold on to the already known concepts of substance and substrate, etc., that it no longer questions. And instead, without representing anything, beginning to see why the Tohypo came in on that which lies idly by in a beautiful way, is here coming to the fore as the most prevalent way in which, uh, which Uziah, in which presence seems to be, seems to come to be. Why is that? Again, thinking must find a ground, but that ground, as it were, is not always already given. It finds its ground in developing, in unfolding itself. And it is the Tohupo Kemenon about which nothing other can be said. So you see, it's, it's, it's not about predication, etc. Not so much, at least. At, at least for now, at least in this moment here. But holding on to about, about that which nothing else can be said, but everything, but everything else can be said from it. So thinking finds a ground. And the trouble starts when the representation, when representation kicks in and the imagination and begin to try and hold on to the Tohupo Kemenon as an always already stable, permanent foundation. Which it isn't. It has to be found through investigation of what something was to be in its being. Of what something is in its presence. Once that has been found, 
we can pull out in thinking it's ground. That which grounds it, the, que the thing in question. But this ground, again, isn't always already given. It comes about. And it comes about. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm trying to not go into um, you know, actuality, potentiality, and the question of, <clears throat> of matter and form just here, just to stay very, very focused on a couple of lines only. Because Aristotle himself is working this out as he goes along. And as we read these texts again, perhaps we can disclose something that is crucial for us and crucial also for this text and the echoes in between our time spheres. So I'll, once though we get to this standard reading that the substrate is that which remains throughout counterpositional change, let me try and say this. It is the tohuku pupu kemenon that thinking has found that isn't all, so it's not yet always already given. But it is we as the thinking and temporal beings that can recognize, learn again to see in the altered and transformed way of something, that something in its old ways, toti enainai which we so benignly translate as essence, that which was to be being. But is the Tuhupu came in on is not that on top of which something occurs, but is that which the thinking being in his or her investigation of that which is in question brings in. It's not that we provide the ground for it, as it were, as a stable, permanent ground. But the human being is demanded in this occurrence or taking place of the, seeing the phenomena to safeguard them, to, to refer to Aristotle himself, so saying phenomena, to safeguard the phenomena and to say what is and what isn't and what still is and what, however, that can also occur through change, has lost it's what it was to be, its old way, and is no longer, but is now a mere seeming, a shadow of itself. If the substrate were stable throughout change, well, nothing could ever fall off from being. Nothing could ever just fall into a seeming. And again, I say here, and this is so poorly translated, I'm sorry. Hence, we must first determine its nature. Nowhere does it say physis, so not, not, phys nature is not mentioned. For the primary substrate is considered to be in the truest sense substance. Well, no. Malista kartuke enai uzia to hypokemenon proton. It seems, doke, it seems. He doesn't say considered, he says it seems. It seems, it appears. It could also be a false appearance. But it seems to be in the most way present. Why is to hypokaminon in the most uh, most strong in the strongest way malista am meisten in German? Um, in the in, in the strongest sense, why is it in the strongest sense Uzia to hypokaminon? I think that. It is that for thinking, again, in that which has come to be the ground, that which was to be, finds its place. And in this place finding, coming into its own, as it were, what can shine forth, doxa, means also shining in that sense, what can shine forth in the most way is this thing in its own particular way of being present. But again, this is not, <laughs> this is not divided from, I think, from time, not even for Aristotle, even though I know the Entelecheia is a, a timeless 
a process of development, etc. But here, I think, because of the mentioning of Toti and Einai, and this is, I'm not saying I've solved the problem and now everything's, no. We, this is an attempt to, to, to read only about, what, five or six lines in Aristotle. Without going to the already understood or seemingly understood concepts and, and schemata by which we can operate and just control our, our Aristotle, as it were. But no, it's, it's an attempt to try and disclose something that's lurking there, which can perhaps also disclose the world to us today in a new way. And to see that also in Aristotle, we find attempts at, well, not, not attempts at breaking free from something that's not really there, but to, to, to say, well, to, to let the things themselves come to the fore. To safeguard the phenomena, to save them in that way. And maybe also you're, you can pick up on the difference between an attempt to think and the attacks of, the rep, of, of representation and the imagination that always already seem to know exactly what is at stake and just operate with already known schemata. So, I'm very open, of course, as always, to hear your thoughts on this. So please do leave a comment and any criticisms, of course, as well. And if there's anything that stands out in particular in this video, I'll try and, I mean, one of your comments, I'll try and respond. Again, I just read chapter three in Metaphysics 7 in the book Eta, and I would very much also invite you to support the work on this channel. By any means necessary, there will be a list of possibilities to do that just beneath the video in the description. It allows me to keep reading and to try and share what it is that I stumble upon when I read Aristotle and others. So thank you very much indeed.